Hello, Survivors, and welcome back to another episode of Stranded Survivors. Yes, we finally will actually have some ARC content. Today, though, I am here with a special guest. I am here with Hop. Hop, how are you doing? What's going on? I'm having a blast. What more, what more could you ask for than to get a chance to, to co-host this uh, wonderful podcast that I enjoy so much? Yeah, I appreciate you joining, man. I, you know, was like, Hop's going to do great on this episode. So today we are going to be talking about aberration. But in general, Hop, I want to know, you know, what you've been up to. Um, honestly, just trying to keep my head above water. Um, in the last five weeks or so, it's been kind of a topsy-turvy thing. During the course of that time, my father actually passed away and had to deal with all that stuff. And and uh, so now we're past the, the worst part of that. Now it's down to the... You know, he still had a mortgage on his house. I still got to get do the banking and all the the paperwork of that, and and so it's kind of a it's kind of a crazy dynamic. Work starting to pick up, so yeah. But I am getting back into my streaming, and you know, so I'm I'm excited to, to be able to be streaming and and getting back on Twitch and stuff as well as developing stuff to put on the YouTube channel. So I can't complain. Life's being good so far. Yeah, well, I'm sorry for your loss, but I'm glad that, you know, you started streaming again and different oh, things yeah. like that because, you know, those are things that would probably, like, if I was a streamer, would probably, like, fill my cup. It, yeah, it's it, it actually takes your mind off a lot of it. Um, sometimes when you're dealing with grief and stuff, I mean, Dad had been sick, so it's not like I... I got terribly down in the dumps. I miss him, but it's a, it's a, different, it's a different situation uh, with my life, belief system, et cetera, et cetera. So... Uh, you know, honestly, it's it's one of those things where the streaming, the content, being involved with Gamers Guild has all kind of uh, helped me get past it. So, what have you been up to? Man, I've uh, really just been chilling quite a bit. I mean, yes, it has been a month, of course, right? But um, I've just really been chilling, um, playing some golf, hanging out with the wife. Really nothing crazy. Hopefully soon I'm going to get back on a... Monday through Friday schedule for work is really what I'm hoping because I technically like applying for a job, even though like I already have that job, I just have different hours, but either way, I should be working Monday through Friday soon again and not working 13 hour weekends. So I'm actually looking forward to, you know, what's to come. Beat. Well, I'm going to eventually pull you into the gamers guild PVP. We're kicking off next month. Oh yeah, I think that'll be a blast. <laughs> We're starting it with a gentleman's PvP type thing and and uh I'll I'll be able to share more about that probably next weekend. We're we're creating uh different packs and stuff that people can buy and things like that, but the biggest thing is it's going to it's not going to be your your bloodthirsty PvP because a lot of the people in our cluster are used to PvE. So to immediately shove them into kill or be killed every moment of every day to where sleep becomes a difficult option to choose uh, mm. probably <laughs> would cause more uh, more PTSD than, than necessary. So <laughs> we're going with the gentleman's PvP, but just for fun, we added that NPC, we're going to add that NPC mod into it as well. Oh, yeah. And we're going to crank it up a notch on its difficulty. So people are not going to have it easy, even if people aren't all congregating at the same time. <laughs> yeah, I mean, hey, man, any sort of PvP I think is better than PvE, in my opinion. So I've never played it, but honestly, the more we've been planning it, I'm actually considering trying it out. Uh, we're going to have a three-month mini-season uh, for the PvP map, and we're all kind of excited to see where it ends up leading to. But uh, yeah, I I think it's going to be a fun new thing for the for the cluster as a whole. So I'm excited about it. Yeah. Um. So today, uh, Hop, we got aberration is what we're going to be talking about. Man, there's been yep. so much news, so many different things coming to aberration, and mm -hmm. I just want to know and ask you, what is something you're really looking forward to in aberration? Um, honestly, just to see the UE5 version of it. Yep. Um, I mean, we go back and we look at, at, you know, I even did an island comparison video where I split the screen and had the ASE island versus the ASA island. And of course, everybody knows the, the starkest and most immediate difference is South Zone 1. Everybody spawns there, you know, and in the island, it suddenly has this big looking monument rock 
plateau statue thingy right there where most people would spawn normally. So it was very different looking on South Beach 1, even though it had a very familiar feeling the rest of the way around it. Um, and the same thing for Scorched Earth. You know, it it's, was a very familiar feeling to it, but the textures and stuff looked very different. Aberration was an extremely um, special, unique style of map. The colors, the vibrance of it, uh, the, the absolute danger, uh, the non-flyer element that's added to it. And when you add it to this UE5 upgrade, you know who knows what they're going to make things look like. I mean, seriously, we have no idea uh, what the textures will eventually look like. I mean, what's it going to look like on the surface when you got all the all the nasty going on there? And not to bring up bugs, but did they fix the bug that was on ASE the last six months it existed? Or no matter if it, even if it was night, you burned to death if you went on the surface. Yeah. It was impossible to get the uh, get the Reaper tribute for the boss fight. Because they they had it for whatever reason, and I don't know if it was an Atrato thing or if it was a wildcard code thing, but for several months, nobody could go on the surface, even at night, uh, when you're supposed to be safe to go up on the surface. So <laughs> did they fix that bug, or did they just carry the code over, and people are going to be really, really ticked off when they go to get the, the tribute for the boss fight? Who knows? But I'm interested to see what it looks like. I think it could be the most beautiful map we've ever seen, or they could have completely screwed it up. Who knows? Yeah, honestly, never know. I think that um, something that I'm really looking forward to definitely is, you know, the UE5 improvement and just the whole visualization and different things like that. I think, but for me, the biggest thing I'm looking forward to, even though I don't necessarily like them, I think I just want to see how this spider works. I've not used this spider, you know, the Cosmo or whatever, right? It's called the, um, what is it called? the cosmo I cosmo just, is what it, they're calling it i yeah. call it the stolen the stolen property but that's beside the point that's a whole different discussion <laughs> <laughs> but uh so you know i'm kind of looking forward to the cosmo just to see how like that plays out and like if that's actually going to be any sort of viable at all what do you think do you think it's going to be viable in any sort of aberration or do you think it's just going to be a cute little creature um i think it's going to be both I think everybody wants it right now because it's going to be a cute looking creature. I think everybody wants it now because it's going to be that little fuzzy, uh, whatever that can sit on your shoulder. Um, I, I also think that it has potential to replace grappling hooks and the, um, the climbing picks. And if it does anything like that to give you some form of an advantage there, uh, from a weight perspective of not having to carry those around on you or whatnot, it could actually help make the rock drake trench a lot easier, you know, trying to go get those mm -hmm. eggs. Yep. Uh, there's so many things that it could make uh, very, that were very difficult, less difficult. Um, but I don't know. Like anything, they're going to, if it's too OP, they're going to nerf it. Um, I'm not sure if they've done it to the pyromane yet, but I, I assume at some point, you know, there are things like that that have too much OP nature. Uh, they're going to probably pull back a little on it, but uh, there's so many good things that comes in this map. Cosmo is going to be exciting. Uh, I can't wait to see the Rock Drakes. Um, from the art that they released last week in the Crunch, the uh, the key art, the Rock Drakes do not look as big as they used to. Uh, and, and Because the person writing on it just looks so much larger on the Rock Drake than it, than it did before. So did they nerf the size and cut down the size of the rock drake? You know, uh, this Yi Ling character, the community creature that was voted in, what's it going to be like? Is it going to be a flyer that, that actually breaks the no flyer rule that Aberration had? All tails are going to do that anyway with the blimp, but <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how all those come out. Cosmo probably is the one everybody's looking forward to just because it's cute. Uh, but I, yeah, it will replace grappling hooks, I think. Unless they nerf it. Yeah, I also do think it's going to replace grappling hooks. Even just looking, you know, at the dossier and different things like that, it does look like it's going to be the viable form of transportation. And like you said, I do think it's actually going to be a lot easier for people to get rock drake eggs. Mm -hmm. um, and honestly, I didn't make that observation that the human looked a lot smaller. And granted, it could, yes, it could just be the picture. But I'm going to assume they did make them smaller. But you never know.
it's it's going to be interesting. Um, I'm wondering if Cosmo is going to allow you to travel like you used to on a Bloodstalker from uh, Gen One or whatever uh, it was. You might be right. Remember, it was like the Spider Man thing. It was yep. it would literally sling out a web. I'm wondering if it's going to allow you to do that and swing. I mean, how fast could you cross the map that way with some of the tall trees and stuff that are in aberration? It'll be interesting. Yeah, that's true. Honestly, I I think it will be very interesting. And you know, you did bring up you know, flying or the potential of flying and different things like that for these new creatures. And the Yi Ling, um, I've seen like a lot of people like, how did this actually get voted for? And like people frustrated, like I've seen Nettie and a bunch of people on his post. Mm -hmm. Like, I'm not looking forward to this dino and just stuff like that. Like, are you looking forward to this dino? Do you think it's like actually going to break the flyer rule? Like, what do you think? The art that I've seen makes it look like a flyer. It's basically got Desmodus wings. Yep. That's what it looks like. Um, it's got those Desmodus looking wings where the it's got the clutch in the middle and it looks like it's, you know, literally like an arm you know, with with but it looks like a flyer. It does not look like a glider. Uh Rock Drake's got away with it mainly because their wings were not really wings. It was just a bunch of feathers that made them glide. And so they were, you know, you could glide around. And it felt like you were flying because if you took off just right and, and got yourself flying right, you could glide a long way. And it felt like you were flying across the zone. It it just did. This is going to be different. I, I just don't see it. I, I don't think it'll... It just doesn't look like it's going to work the same mechanics the Rock Drake had, though they may be trying. Uh, but it looks too much like a flyer. It looks it looks like a duck and smells like a duck. Then, you know, I think what I'm looking forward to most with this Yi Ling is to find out what it's going to cause in the community. Is the backlash going to be as real uh, as we fear it is. I mean, you, like you said, you got guys like Nettie and them that are already coming out and saying this doesn't look like it would fit here. Um, but the Giganta Raptor didn't look like it was going to fit on the center because that it was supposed to be a Shastasaurus. Yep. You know, and they, they've made changes like that a lot. But uh, if we go back to the voting, remember, the, the one that finished in second place was the one they swiped and turned into Cosmo. It was supposed to be a lot bigger spider, fluffy spider. And uh, that one ended up finishing, I think, second or third in the voting. I mean, it just, and then they ended up making a shoulder pet out of it. So I don't know. Uh, I, I'm hopeful. I'm hopeful it's going to, it's not going to be a a hurtful thing for the community because all they need is bad to happen to ruin this map and it will it will kill any momentum that that bringing Ab out will give them. Yeah, I agree. So something I do want to say before I continue, though, is um, make sure you guys do listen until the end. You know, I will try to give a little bit of an update on just stranded survivors in general. It's not going to be like a full update by any means. I just want to give you guys a little bit of an update. But continuing on with your conversation is I know today our episode is about aberration so we will make this one quick but i do want to ask you you know arcs i would say is at a downfall right like it really has been ever since survival ascended came out and i want to know if you like what do you foresee the arc future looking like like yes i understand at least in my opinion i think the game will grow once more maps come out like is that your thought too or like kind of what's your thought on the state of arc Oh my. Um I will try not to be too long winded. Um I'm worried. I, I'm worried. I think I think worried is a very good way to put it simply because there are so many variables and so many things that are happening that are counterproductive to itself. Mm -hmm. Um I love the fact that, that you know we are getting a new map, but honestly they should have had three or four of these maps done and ready to go when the game first launched last year in October. Yep. Um, I mean, I maybe not necessarily all the story maps, but they definitely should have had, say, you know, the center and and Ragnarok and you know Valgaro or, or whatever ready to go to go with the island and, and give people 
variety. To be stuck on the island for like five months was <laughs> just a disaster waiting to happen because that's the easiest map. I, it's one of my favorites. I still love the island map. Don't get me wrong. I still love the island map. I, I enjoy playing on the island more than I like playing on Scorched Earth. Um, that's just I've always I've always liked the island best. Uh, but as far as like some of the story maps. But I don't. Uh, I just don't think it was wise to have one map for five months. It wouldn't have mattered if that map was Aberration, or or any of the really you know maps that were. Be- if it had been Ragnarok, everybody was still would have got bored in five months with only one map. So that was bad. Um, the mods are counterproductive. I like the mods. Don't get me wrong. I love the mod, mod makers. I think, in fact, uh, my streams lately, the last week and a half. I've streamed three times from uh, that in Saluna map made by Armin Gamer. Uh, one of our one of our Gamers Guild uh, folks has uh, that on a private server, and uh, I love it. I mean, I love the map. It's a beautiful map. But some of the mods are breaking things and allowing things to be released early. Uh, you have a a. I'll just use the Griffin mod. The Griffin mod is one I know that I believe Reddit Survivors has on their server, you all server. Yep. It, it, the Griffin mod, I believe, is on there. Um, get the tame Griffins, and they can be pygmy, they can be regular. There's so many variances that come with it, but it's it's a really great Griffin mod, and that was great to have. Okay, someday Ragnarok's going to drop. Yep. What happens? Uh, one of the exciting things about Ragnarok is the Griffins. Yeah, that's true. Taking that away by allowing the mod to become, you know, one of the more downloaded mods. The people are not going to be nearly as excited about getting the, I will say this, I've not seen any mods. I think there are some mods that will give you rock drakes, but I've not really seen them used widely. And that may be one of the saving graces for Ab is that nobody's going to be like disappointed with the rock drakes, you know, because, well, we already had them. I really feel that way. I was worried about that to a degree with Wyverns because of the uh, Draconic uh, mod that was out. Yep. Um, but it didn't, because there's such a difference between that mod and, and what Wyverns are on Scorched Earth, I don't think it hurt quite as bad. But once you conquered the trench, eh, whatever. You know, you're done. You know, you just, there's just not a lot. Um, here, you know, you're going to get to rag and it's going to be like, oh, well, we've had Griffins for a year. Yep. Not as special now. It's not as big a deal. Um, and I think they allow a lot of that stuff out. Uh, they'd have been smarter to go straight to the arc additions and, and just add those in and th- th- different things like that. And to, uh, let people make mods that bring too many of these other animals in. Uh, so that's why I think it's like counterproductive in that way. You're taking away the potential of replayability and excitement of what is coming with each of these maps. Because each map has something special. It really does. Uh, you know, Valgaro is where we got the Deinonychus. Well, Deinonychus are already available in mods. One of the yep. mods, the Discovery mod, is the most OP mod I've ever seen. <laughs> you run the Discovery mod on your on your map you can get everything all the way up to tech striders and tech animals and you know, all the game breaking stuff from Genesis 2 is there Dynonicus is available i mean everything is you can have all kinds of stuff and um it's wonderful i mean it makes it easy to eventually get your farm going and, and gather stuff like crazy <laughs> but by the time genesis Two comes out when the text writer was originally supposed to be added to the to the menus. By this rate, we're talking late twenty five, early twenty six, for Genesis two would even show up. Yeah, and people have had text writers for a year and a half already. That is true. I mean, I, it's just uh, you know, I don't know. I I wor- I worry about the longevity for that, and then to have the statement last week that. Um, Arc 2 and future installments, uh, you know, whatever they want to do in the future of the game is wholly dependent upon the success of ASA. Yep. When more people are still playing ASE to almost a two to one ratio. Mm -hmm. That's scary. It makes me think that they're not, you know, they're not really invested. And 
I don't know if everybody realizes this, but they also stopped the creature votes that they were doing uh, through the community crunches and stuff. Mm -hmm. You know, they stopped those after planning for the extinction map. We've not had one since then. Yeah, you're right. And I've always said, could it be that they're done ASA-wise, early access, quote-unquote, after extinction if the player base doesn't increase? I don't know. But I'm worried. So those are all the reasons that my my state of thinking on this for, for ARK in general is worried. I still love the game. I still love playing the game. And I like trying to make content with the game. But I'm worried that we're still never going to see all of the canon maps show up, much less these other DLC maps. It scares yeah. me a little bit. I'm a little worried. What about you? What do you think? I mean, my little quick update probably would be that, yeah, I'm 100% worried. And um, honestly, if I'm being dead honest with you, man, I personally have not played the game in three months. I, you know, of course, I found other games, you know, like NCAA football, different things like mm. that, right? Um. <laughs> and I've loved that, but either way, but I mean, dude, the game is just, I mean, I always will go back to the game, right? Like that's just that kind of game, but I yeah. really got worried too. You know, I still keep up to date on arc and different things. Um, but I was really also worried, like you said, when we heard that there's the potential for them to not even make arc two and different things like that, depending on the success of ASA. And to be mm -hmm. honest, this game oh we're never gonna see arc 2 at this point. oh we're not I, i'm not even yeah we're not going to because there's not enough success in asa because to be honest a lot of it would have happened when the game first came out like don't get me wrong yes i know there's more maps release and that will bring players back but it's not gonna get to the level where we need to be able to see arc 2 in my opinion 99.9 .9 arc arc 2 is not a thing and asa itself is has a low player base and i don't know how to fix it yes maps are going to help but it will never bring it back up to the level that we all love and enjoyed the game yeah yeah now there are some things that could help it i mean if we want to if we want to talk hail mary you know figuring things out uh, of what would work to save it number one the proposed upgrade 5.4 with the other 3.1 optimization with it. It's supposed to make it better for computers and consoles to run the game. Yep. The biggest knock on ASA is the fact that for whatever reason, it's a game that you actually have to have a top tier rig to run well. You have to. And most people don't. Most people have a solid solid gaming rig that will that will run most games really well and it won't look bad and your frame rates won't drop but asa is different for whatever reason it just taxes the living bejesus out of your <laughs> system yep and because of that people said screw it i'm not gonna play it yep and that's why they've stuck with ASE. and there's at times when ASE looks better and it looks cleaner i watched a video from ASE that some guys did uh just you know spending time together doing a kind of a hundred days challenge together and uh, I watched that video, and I knew immediately when they were standing on South Zone 1, they were in ASC. Mm -hmm. And the, the video was released like a week and a half, two weeks ago. <laughs> but people are still making content on ASC. They're still, you know, uh, because it's cleaner content. I, I, until the, you know, that could change everything, though. That, that upgrade right there could be more important than the maps. To make it to where people don't have to have a Six thousand dollar rig to run the game, <laughs> it might get more players. Yeah, and mm. uh, you know, it, and the maps is going to be great. That's that's going to be wonderful. Uh, being able to transfer, being able to do all that. I don't like the fact that they're also pushing the conquest stuff in the in the crunches. Yeah. Uh, to me, that's just a, a salty thing that gets people upset over T Tribe and all the stuff that happened in ASE. That was never dealt with, and it never will be dealt with. And if anybody thinks it's going to be better in ASA, it's not because Snail runs those Conquest servers. That's their that's their thing. So you know, there's things that they they put out there they shouldn't. Maybe I don't know. Um, but yeah, I really think I really think the optimization could be the one thing that has a chance to save ASA. 
Yeah. I I do agree that it's probably the biggest one even before the maps. Like, this is way bigger than the maps. And the one thing I will say before we continue on Aberration is that this just should have been done before. I don't know why it wasn't done before. Like, you know, like the optimization to be able to make people be able to play it. I don't know why it wasn't done before, but it needed to money. be done before. So, but overall... It was a money decision. Yeah. They had to get that game out by the end of October. They had to. So, I don't know, you know, Nail was in a bad position, and they, they had to release that game. Uh, honestly, it was better than I thought it was going to be with, <laughs> with the rush on the game that I thought, you know, it was. Uh, it, it really was. I think, I don't think anybody walked in there thinking, you know, I thought it was going to be a crash fest, and it was, but it wasn't quite as bad as I thought it was going to be with, with how they just kind of threw it out that one day. They made the announcement and then released it 10 hours later. You know, and it was just, yeah. it was just a boom, here it is. Well, it had to be there or they were going to lose a lot of more money uh, in the deal that they made with uh, Nitrado, uh, Marvis, whatever you want to call them. <laughs> and that's the reason they release it the way it is. I, I think even Steiglitz and the rest of them would have much rather had it on the level of where they're going to want it to be after this upgrade. Yeah. I think he would have loved to have released it with that, but they just, they weren't ready. They weren't ready. They should have been, but they weren't. Yeah, I agree. Well, we did go off on a little tangent there from the both of us, but either way, I'm we'll get for that. back into the good old aberration hop. You mentioned earlier on in the episode that, you know, there was things coming from Bob's Tales, and, you know, you said the blimp, but I want to know if, you know, like, what you think of Bob's Tales and what you think either that's going to bring or what that's not going to bring or even if it will be worth it for people to get Bob's Tales for Aberration? Well, the good the good and the bad about Bob's Tall Tales uh, was that it was an upfront up price for all three maps that were going to be involved in it. So mm -hmm. if you bought it for Scorched Earth, you're going to get the stuff for Ab, you're going to get the stuff for Extinction. Um, I'm not a... I'm not a massive steampunk fan. I mean, yep. the games that are steampunk oriented, you know, with their building mechanics and stuff. Uh, I just always felt it looks a little messy and stuff. And and it can look cool. I'm not going to say it doesn't because there's times when it does. Yeah. Uh, but as an overall theme, I'm like, yeah, that's kind of a meh for me. Um, but as far as what you get uh, in, in Scorched Earth, it was actually a lot of fun. The extra notes are, are good. Um, they enable you to eventually get extra levels, and that's always good. Nobody's ever going to complain with extra levels. <laughs> um, it's also a fun little thing to do the first time around, and then once you're done with it, you're done with it. I mean, you just you just kind of turn off the, the sound on them. Uh, the same way after they recorded all the notes for with David Tennant and them for the island and stuff. It was great to hear it the first time, but then after that, you turn the sound off because yeah. you know, it just does. Um, but... On Scorched Earth, I never built the train. Yep. I loved the um, the outfit costumes. I love the fact that instead of a um, a bed, you could actually make a coffin. Um, I really liked the treasure maps. I think that yeah. was a really cool addition where Those things are, cool. are buried different levels, and you could fly around and and find where the X is on the treasure map, dig with your shovel, and you get stuff. Yep. Uh, cool. I thought that was a great addition. Uh, there's just a lot of good stuff about it. And, and I'm not against the train track either. I didn't mind the train. Um, I thought it kind of fit the Western motif that Scorched Earth kind of has going for it. So it wasn't that bad. Uh, I do worry about the flyer aspect of the blimp. I do. I have another concern with what they released in this most recent crunch. Uh, about the uh, sur Survivor Mate, which is spelled very strange. S-I-R-5-R-M-8, Survivor <laughs> Mate. Um, it's going to be a part of Bob's Tall Tales. I don't know exactly what it is. All it says is it's state-of-the-art automation. There are multiple mods already in use in different maps and stuff that you can use that are fully automated. There's QOL plus, there's M plus, there's, I mean, there's a bunch of them. Is this going to replace those? Is this going to make those unplayable on AB? Is this going, I mean, there's so many questions with uh, the survivor mate. How big of an automation is it? Is it just an individual dyno? 
or is it an entire system that you can build your base to connect to and everything runs off of it? We don't know. I mean, it could be a game breaker. I was worried the train would be a game breaker. So the fact that it really wasn't gives me a little hope that this is going to be a fun little addition and not the possible game-breaking automation uh, you know, that it could be. But uh, yeah, there's a whole lot of stuff coming. Uh, I'm interested to see what the outfits look like with the steampunk stuff. Um, that's the one part I think is going to be really cool. But there's going to be a whole bunch of skins and stuff, and that's always good. Uh, I like it. I'm looking forward to Extinction. The Bob Tall Tales for that is going to be more like Mad Max Furiosa type stuff. Um, you know, supposedly a car is going to be in that. You're going to be able to build a car in Ark. Uh, I think that might be a little too much for me, but otherwise, <laughs> it's going to be interesting to see how it all plays out. I thought it was worthwhile because they gave you three maps worth of stuff for one price, and at least they were upfront about it, not charging ten dollars a map when they come out. Yeah, and I, you know, I don't buy that stuff one because I don't got money, but two because I just <laughs> uh, don't. I haven't played the game in a while, so I didn't think anything was worth it, and I. I did for a little bit think it was pay to win just due to multiple circumstances, but I'm a little over that now for say, yeah. but, um, you know, I, yeah, I'm looking forward to, you know, seeing how people use the blimp, seeing how people use, you know, just kind of all the new things that are coming with that for this. Mm -hmm. Um, and just seeing, like you said, if it's like a big game changer, it does give me a little hope. Like you said to, you know, they didn't make the train super OP. I mean, it is a, Mm -hmm. little op but nothing crazy mm -hmm. so i i do have a little hope for that that they are at least semi trying to not make anything pay to win you know they're just trying to make it like a yeah. per se cosmetic type thing so it, that definitely has me looking forward to it yeah i think the you know of course in the scorched earth the oasis or was part of the tall tales yep. and everybody was so freaked out by that and and i don't know if you've ever tried to tame one but those suckers are evil <laughs> uh, I mean, honestly, they're not hard to tame on the mechanics. I mean, Teachers Game Two did a did a video. Now, of course, he had his own settings and stuff to make it easier, uh, just to show how to do it. But you have to actually, you know, have a dead dino, put their essence in there, and then you have to defend that essence. The problem is, and it's because of the optimization problems of the game. I've tried three different times to tame one of those stupid things. And I've gotten meshed into a mountainside uh, on Scorched Earth nice. every single time. Because it will just keep flying while stuff's, you know, you're supposed to be triggering it. And it'll, it'll go right through like a, a mountain bridge or, or right through the edge of a mountain and you'll mesh right in. Or the dino you rode to land on that sucker will mesh in. It's, it's. And, and then it gets herky jerky because of the attacks, you know, you know the ground shake thing. Mm -hmm. It gets herky jerky. It's hard to see, and all of that causes FPS problems. So maybe the optimization will make that easier to tame. But I still, I still don't have an Oasis. <laughs> <laughs> someday. someday. Yeah, someday. Well, you know, we didn't really do a lot of segments here, um, and just to give people some warnings. We're not reading all the comments this week as it's the first video back. And like I said, I will give that update here very soon. But um, Hop, you know, one thing that people really do love is a story time. And I know you personally have at least been playing a little bit of Ark. So I do want to yeah. hear just a little story, you know, in the last little bit that, you know, maybe a funny story or just a fun, like, cool story, whatever it is. I just want to hear a story about Ark. I it's it's really funny because I have I have had um, a lot of fun lately playing on that Insulina map. Tonight something happened on the stream that I just burst into laughter. Now when I tell you this story, it's nothing super crazy. It's it's literally not um, anything out of the ordinary. It's really not a special thing, but just the way it happened and the viewpoint that I had when it happened made me laugh so hard. Um, I was trying to build a circle foundation, okay, yeah. which is basically you have to do it row by row with triangles and foundations, and, and you start building it out. And I got about three levels in, and it was getting into be a, a pretty good section. Where I'm building next to this lake in, in, uh, in Saluna, 
as a, a raptor problem. Now, it's not a big deal. They're not hard, and I have a <laughs> max level pump action shotgun. I'm never feeling like I'm in danger. So I hear them attacking animals while I'm placing things. And I turn around, and I can feel I just got bit. You know, the, the character jumps. And you see that little bit of blood, you know, where you get bit. And I turn around, and he's just standing there. He's not attacking <laughs> anymore. He's just standing there in the middle of my base. Mm-hmm. I don't know if he got stuck in the in the feet, got meshed into the stone foundation. I'm not sure what it was. Mm-hmm. But he didn't even attack me. I was standing like three feet from him. Didn't even attack me anymore. He was just staring at me. He was like <laughs> a level 90 or something. It wasn't a small one. It was a solid high level medium one. He didn't attack me. I got close and he didn't attack me. But I'm like, you know, you took a bite out of me. I'm still going to kill you. So I pulled, I pulled the shotgun out. And I, I swear, the shotgun, if you were to line it up, was less than 10 inches away from the dude's face. Yep. And I hit fire, and the entire blood splatter from the neck and head made me laugh so hard. And he just <laughs> dropped straight down. And it was hilarious to me. Now, this is not a major occurrence. It's, it's hap- I've killed I don't know how many raptors in the last several years I've played. It's not a shock in any way, shape, or form. But I just found it so funny that the idiot took one bite out of me and just stood there until I <laughs> shot him in the face. It's just the dumbest thing I've ever... The, weren't they supposed to have better uh, pathfinding for stuff like that? Weren't they supposed to? He found his way right next to me on top of foundations and then just stood there. <laughs> like, okay. <laughs> Take my hand, boss. <laughs> Take my shotgun. <laughs> Boom. It was bad. I, but I just got a kick out of that. I think I laughed for two or three minutes straight. People didn't know what happened. They thought I'd gone crazy for a second. But it was funny. <laughs> that's great. So, man. I don't know. That's just something that happened tonight on stream that I just thought was hilarious. Yeah, that's great, man. Well, Hop, here I am going to wrap up things here in just a second. Um, I am going to give everyone a quick update, and then we'll probably end it here, guys. But um, the quick little update here on Stranded Survivors is – one thing, first thing first, let's uh, come out with something here. Is as you guys know, we have not posted in a month. It's been a long time, busy, life's been crazy, um, stuff like that. Um, still no excuse. Um, do want to apologize to anyone that is listening in general. Um, you know, we love to make content or whatever, make, you know, podcast for you guys. Um, my plan is to keep doing that in any way, shape, or form. Um, I know Matt's going to be very busy here soon, taking full-time credit hours in school and full-time work. So we're going to see how that's all going to play out um, with Matt. And also, um, we are going to be canceling our Patreon. Uh, I mean, that's just something that has to go. As a Patreon subscriber yourself, Hop, you know there was really nothing that actually went on. So it wasn't fair to anyone that we were doing that. So we are going to be closing that down here as soon as possible um so sorry i mean i i consider it sorry to anybody that you know did do that there wasn't really much given out but with uh some of the money we do have we do trying to plan on either doing a giveaway paying for you know the server we're gonna figure that out um and also i hope you guys do continue to follow us make sure you guys join the discord we do appreciate all of you a lot of you guys did check in on us well, we were gone, so I appreciate that. Um, also, me personally, am going to do a lot better job on our Discord of engaging with everyone. I, you know, I took that little break, and I really wasn't engaging with a lot of the community as much and different things like that. And I take one hundred percent blame on that. So, for the people that you know were commenting on our Discord and just keeping it alive while we were gone, um, truly appreciate you guys and just anybody that, you know, did all that little stuff. Um, I thank you guys. Um, but I hope you guys continue to watch. I do plan on releasing an episode. I'm going to say hopefully every week. If it's not every week, I'm going to say every other. Um, but overall, I do appreciate all your guys' support. And yeah, Hop, you got anything for the end here? I got your back. Anytime you need me to get on here with you, I'll be happy to get on here with you. And I know there's others that would too. So you never have to worry about trying to do it by yourself. So just know you've always got people here to support you no matter which way it is. I know there's plenty of people that would be happy to talk and be here with you on it. And uh, they just enjoy the podcast. You guys started something really cool here. 
Well, thank you, man. I appreciate it. Well, survivors, keep on surviving. I hope you guys have a great week.